Hello everyone, amateur meteorologist. First one was here. It is January 21st, 2019, and we have just had a major snowstorm impact in northeast. Uh, brought quite a bit of snow to New York, Pennsylvania, and basically all of New England. Many areas in, in state New York saw up to two feet of snow, and, but many most areas saw about 12 to 18 inches where those snow bands really set up. And now we have cold Arctic air in place. Lows tonight, Tuesday night. We're gonna skyrocket downwards, uh, and so if we look at 12Z Tuesday morning, and we go and take a closer uh, look, we can see that in the southeast we have teens in Virginia, low 20s in North Carolina, and this cold air extends down all the way to Florida, but temperatures in the 30s in the Panhandle, and then if we go to the northeast, we can see that we have temperatures below zero actually. So uh, many schools will be on a delay with these significant actual temperatures below zero so wind chill values uh, will be way below zero so we do expect some delays tomorrow morning especially in the New England states and now if we go back to the CONUS view and go to the FV3 model I want to take you through uh, what's going to be going on for the next uh, couple of weeks or so what the pattern is going to be like and any snow chances for the eastern United States and then I'll briefly touch on the long range um, outlook, uh, what the month of February is looking like as of now. So, this is tomorrow. We have high pressure in place. So, tomorrow will be the last cold day before we warm up due to this low pressure area here that's going to go northeast, something like this. So, that's going to allow warm air to surge in for Wednesday, warming these areas up uh, back to average to above average. And so, uh, as you can see that does happen you have those that warm air pushing northwards cold front right here some snow on the back side of it all right not more of a cheap throw not much of a big, uh, not a big deal really um, and then as that cold front comes through it basically almost slows down quite significantly I mean, you have a secondary of low pressure track along it according to this model with some pretty substantial uh, snow on the back side this remains to be seen as some of the more high-res models are showing very little in, the ter in terms of snow uh, for the system. So that still is in, the, is in um, up for grabs, so to say, with that. But we do know that it's going to be a cold front coming through. Uh, pretty good rains, actually, for the entire eastern portion of the country, going all the way down, going all the way down from Florida, where you can see some really heavy rain all the way north to uh, upstate New York. So this is, again, 12 to Thursday. So Thursday morning, we're seeing heavy rain pretty much in the entire I-95 corridor. And that goes through. And then maybe some snow to end things in New England, but really not much of a big deal. And after that, we get another little wave of cold air, uh, jet stream like this, pumping in that cold air. And then we have a few small weak, uh, energy disturbances, weak pieces of energy, some lake effect. Really nothing much to talk about, not a big deal. Some this is all normal when you have these Arctic outbreaks. And if you look at the temperature anomaly, we can see that this is another pretty good Arctic outbreak. Um, not as strong as the last one, but pretty substantial, especially in the upper Midwest after that cold front comes through. Temperatures 15 to maybe 20 degrees below average in a few areas. And now if we go back to the precip view, you can see that we have just more cold weather, some weak disturbances coming through, nothing too substantial. And then this is now January 26th, all right? So this is Saturday, January 26th. Uh, so this is a few days after that cold front came through. We're still in that coldish pattern, temperature anomalies below average. And then a lot of the models are showing or are trying to show a system developing down here and then basically going north. This is very similar to the January 4th, 2018 snowstorm that hit the United States uh, last year, which brought... Uh, pretty good snowstorm to the coastline uh, and it basically missed the inland portions of the eastern United States. And I, In fact, I remember we had blizzard warnings in the eastern coastline of Virginia, like Norfolk, Virginia, areas that very uh, rarely get those type of snows. In fact, they got to think about a foot of snow if I'm not mistaken. So this does look quite similar to that storm if it does materialize. Obviously, we're pretty far out and so there is still a lot of uncertainty regarding how the system will play out. And so when you have this situation, the best thing to do is, is to look at the ensemble models, not to look at a specific model. Because remember, this is just one model out of the other 20 so models um, in that specific area. So if we switch to the GEFS ensembles, 
go to uh, let's see where is it ensemble member MSLP we can see that it's trying to show something maybe right here um, some area of low pressure right there you can see those little red dots red numbers and then it kind of tries to show something maybe something here a little bit of something right here uh, not much clarity and then it does definitely so definitely show something though a closed low right here look at this right here and according to the ensembles this would be a little bit too far off the coast for any significant uh, precip in these areas uh, in areas west of this area right here but it, it would be something to watch the, the ensemble models definitely do show that there is potential for a system to develop and track basically due north which could provide some snow for the coastline and eastern portions of New England and the Mid-Atlantic. Now, I want to go back to the uh, FV3 model and go to precip. So th this is the 18Z FV3 model, and this particular run has the system going very close to the coast, uh, something like that. And, th and that causes it to basically give extremely heavy snow uh, for these areas right here. Very, very heavy snow, all right, because it's taking more of an inland track. And then it goes north. You have rain in Boston, snow west, snow in uh, the suburbs of New York, New Jersey, and upstate New York after they have reached the cold sector. But one thing I want to show you, and one thing you might have noticed already, is this does not look like a typical snowstorm. Usually, when you have a low pressure right here, it's snow in all of these areas and then rain right here, but they're seeing snow right here. Why is that? Well, that's because this low pressure is not your ordinary low pressure that produces a snowstorm where it goes like this. You have this nice little area of snow to the north of it, so you're all happy up here. This is going due north, right? So that cold sector of the low is going to be to the west. The orientation of the low is completely different than your normal typical snowstorm low. And so you have the low actually producing rain in Boston right here as it's in that warm sector to the east of the low. And so that's why uh, if you look at the temperatures at this certain time frame, you can see that we're actually above freezing, believe it or not. Even though we're seeing that really heavy snow, the orientation of, of this low is in such a way that it's going to be very hard to see that extremely cold air in place. And so that also is another challenge. Even if this low does get near to the coast and track up north, we're going to be dealing with issues with the amount of cold air in place. So that's, an, that's also another issue. And then on the other hand, you have some models like the GFS just keeping this way out to sea and giving us nothing, clear skies. And then you have the European that does have something forming, but it has it, the, the orientation it has it in, the formation of it is in such a way where you just have warm air and you have rain for the entire eastern United States with snow on the backside, the very fringe backside which would be more like right here than rain just everywhere else. So very different solutions for all the models. The European ensembles also do show a low forming right here and then going like this. So that, that does show that there's potential for something. It just remains unclear if it's actually going to play out. And the reason that these systems are tracking in the in this uh, northwest fashion going like this or not really going like this is because we're not seeing any blocking right now we're not seeing any blocking up here uh, forcing the system forcing these systems to go down like this and so just by luck we have this one system that's uh, being shown in the models to develop and go up north but I mean we need a perfect track for this to actually bring a good snowstorm for the mid-atlantic and northeast because that, again, that warm air and that cold air, that orientation is very different with this type of low. So it's a very tricky forecast, um, even if we do uh, see the models start to consolidate and provide a snowstorm for the East Coast. And that is, again, a big if. Right now, there's a lot of debate up in the air as to what's going to happen. Um, it, the storm could go like this, go like this. Uh, like this, or if you go like this, or even that. So th this this huge variety of solutions. And there's also the possibility the low doesn't even form. So again, we're eight days out. The only thing is that there is potential for something January 28th. There's potential, um, but other than that, we're not sure at all. So we're gonna I'm gonna uh, 
get a better idea of this by probably Wednesday or Thursday. That's when I'll, when I'll have a concrete idea of the potential with the system. Uh, so right now, it's just something to look for and to watch over the coming days. So now if we go past that, the model has another reinforcing blast of cold air, Arctic air spilling into the central portion of the country and also due east. Very cold Arctic air coming in, more disturbances and clipper systems coming through. And it wants to show another system developing and I'm not surprised that it's showing that with that Arctic air, with that uh, Arctic air coming in. I wouldn't be surprised if you have a little piece of energy intensify off the coast and maybe provide a bit of snow. But again, this is January 30th, really not accurate at this time. It's just a reflection of the type of pattern we're seeing. And it's showing that the pattern that we're seeing is one that is very stormy potentially uh, with, these colder, with these colder outbreaks for the eastern United States. And as we go through time, we have another frontal system, basically going like this. Again, another cold, uh, another area of cold behind it, uh, well below average temperatures behind this. So again, we're not seeing that blocking forcing the south, keeping the cold air locked in um, the mid-Atlantic and northeast. Usually, if you have that blocking up here, the cold air would stay locked in place, and this low would go like this, providing big snows for this entire area. So it remains to be seen if we're going to see this blocking develop as we go through February. And now, as that goes, I want to develop a little low, maybe provide something. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So. Key summary, many Arctic outbreaks or cold shots over the next two weeks. Ahead of each cold shot, we're going to warm up and then it's going to cool down dramatically after that uh, because that those systems will be going to the northwest uh, generally. And then also January 28th, something that I'm watching that does have the potential maybe to give us a good snowstorm to the northeast and mid-Atlantic, but way too much uncertainty right now. And now let's talk about the long range. So, all the models are showing the potential for a very, very cold February. And so the CFS model, I don't really like this model because it has a big cold air bias or warm air bias. So when it shows below average temperatures, you've got to take it seriously. Uh, and so this is for the 20th of January to from the 4th of February. As we can see, very cold temperatures uh, or below average temperatures for the entire eastern portion of the country, eastern second half of the country. Now as we go through... Uh, the next week, uh, it actually warms it up. So again, look at this. February 4th through 18th, it was showing cold for the entire eastern half of the country on previous runs, and now it's warming it up. So that's definitely not a good sign for you snow lovers out there. And then after that, it does uh, cool it back down significantly in this area. But that's a dangerous uh, trend. If it's going to be warming that area that's supposed to be so cold, um, that definitely is a concern, and again, like I said, it does have a warm bias, but still, before it was calling for that time frame for very cold air, right here, right here, everywhere, basically east of the Mississippi, and if it's reversing on that trend, uh, that is something to watch, because um, this February is supposed to be very cold and snowy for the east, and if that warming trend continues, if we continue to see those low pressure systems track like this, providing rain for these areas, and then snow in the Midwest, um, this could be a bust if this verifies. I mean, again, this is just one model, one, one model. I'm not saying I agree with this, but I'm saying that this is something to watch. So right now for February, I'm still sticking with my cold and snowy uh, forecast for the eastern United States. Uh, but if this warming trend continues, if the model continues to show this, if the other models, the F3 and the Europeans, start to show hints of this, which they're not right now, I will look into it uh, more in depth, and I'll give you guys another video. So that pretty much sums up this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.